All right, welcome back, guys. Kirby, if you're making $75,000 a year before taxes, how much should your car payment be? Well, I'm going to say what my car payment will be or would be if I made $75,000 a year. Uh, my car payment would be zero. And the reason why I say zero is because I would go find the, I'm not going to say the cheapest thing on earth, but what I would do is I would go find you know, some $3,500 or whatnot. And then, but I'm having that mindset, you know, so I saved up $3,500 and I'm buying a car. My car itself is just something that will get me from point A to point B. I don't expect to drive this car for 50 years, but if it lasts a long, great. But I'll always have the mindset, I already have the mindset of, you know, what the price of cars are in the future. And then, so with that, I would look up, Think of like, okay, I'm going to set $500 a month. Let's say I need a car. I would set $500 a month to the side because that's what a car payment or what an average car payment now is like 700 to a thousand. But I'll set, you know, around $500 a month to the side. But I would try to keep that car running for the next 500 years if I could. But I will still pay myself that car payment. I will still pay myself that car payment. One thing that pissed me off about people is they say, oh, well, if I put... You know, I only paid thirty five hundred dollars for the car, and then I put twenty five hundred in there. The car is not even the car is not even worth that. What you now you in the flipping car business? You're not. You just you're just you just have something that's going to get you from point A to point B, and then all the underwater talk and all that other stuff that people try to justify going to pay a car payment and all that. It makes no sense. I I get what you're saying. If you you want to bring up the numbers when it makes sense for you. But if you knew numbers, then you wouldn't be in the situation you're in for the most part. Uh, more than, more than uh, you know, 40% of Americans can afford a $1,000 emergency. But like I was saying, see, I was about to go off on a tangent because those people be pissed me off too. <laughs> but, but what I would do is I would just save the money to the side and I would just keep driving that car to the end. And then let's say that car goes kaput before, you know, I have the ability to pay cash for another car. I mean, a, like a brand new, new, new car. Then what I would do is I would go spend thirty five hundred to five thousand dollars again, and just keep renting, repeating, and doing that. Now, as life goes on, then my income grows higher and stuff like that, but way higher. You know, I get to the hundred and fifty or so, you know, a month. Then I would just go pay cash, but it would be, you know, you know, my my bread and butter. It would be a Ford or a Toyota, hopefully a Toyota Corolla, you know, <laughs> and just and just keep on riding it because. To me, cars is nothing but something that's gonna get you point A to point B. Is most most of the time it's gonna be a long dart. What I mean by long dart, if you think about twenty four hours in a day, eight hours of the day you're gonna be asleep, so it's gonna be sitting in your driveway. Another eight hours, I say you're gonna be at work, it's gonna be sitting in the parking lot. That's sixteen hours out of the day already. And then you're gonna go to and fro to the grocery store, maybe pick up the kids from uh, school. Maybe party a little bit on the weekends, but for the most part, it's just gonna be park. So why am I gonna pay fifty, seventy, a hundred thousand dollars for a car that's just gonna sit around and do nothing? It don't make sense to me. And all that money could be going to another thing that could be producing money and producing cash flow for me, so I can forget about this damn job in the future and not hugging on it when I'm in my seventies and eighties, still trying to pay to live. That's just how I look at it. Yeah. What yeah, I agree completely. Um, I mean, that's what I did when my wife and I combined were making 75000 We didn't have a car payment. Um, and that was one of the biggest benefits to be able to, you know, help us invest hundreds of dollars a month because we didn't have a car payment. And that's what actually set us aside from a lot of people, too. I think that's a common thing in everybody's budget is they believe that they have to have some kind of car payment. I see everybody with the car payment. And if you can just tolerate having an older car, then the ability to have extra cash, I think, is well worth more than, you know, having a couple extra gadgets in your dashboard and interior of your car. Um, so I think that's definitely the way to go. Um, your strategy is something that I would do, too. And people don't realize, like, you shouldn't be trying to put a value like you were saying where people are like talking about going underwater and oh if i put this into it it's not worth this a car is just a tool to take you 
to where you need to go. It shouldn't be looked at as some kind of like, you know, asset in your portfolio or something. Cars depreciate heavily. So I'm on board with this one for sure. Yeah. I mean, those same people, you don't hear them saying, uh, you don't hear them saying, oh, I'm about to get a, I'm about to go get my hair done for three hundred dollars, but I ain't even worth three hundred dollars. They don't y'all say they don't, <laughs> they don't say they underwater then. You know what I mean? So don't don't come don't come push me with those numbers when you ain't using the numbers in the rest of your life. You know what I mean? You know, they got they got everything. You know, the guys getting the, you know, just because you putting a pair of two hundred dollar pair of Jordans on your feet, you ain't even worth two hundred dollars with the Jordans on your feet. So you underwater your damn self. So don't come to me throwing around numbers when you don't know numbers when it comes to your life in general. And that's why I think people just they they have no concept of clue, mm -hmm. and then they want to sound smart for about five minutes. But you wouldn't be in that situation in the first place if you was actually smart when it comes to finance. Absolutely. With all that being said, guys, let us know what you think down in the comment section below. How much would you spend if you were making that salary? Don't forget to share this video, subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you guys in the next one.